Chapter 1. Learn rule number 1 to make money. There are many ways to get rich, but it's much easier when you learn how to invest with rule number 1. It's so simple that you don't even have to be that smart to get it. A lot of people are trapped in mutual funds that, at best, ride the waves of the market. They diversify to spread the risk. They're in it for the long haul. They're doing all that the experts tell them to do, except they still lose lots of money in market downturns. Rule number one is the outcome of the one tried and true investing strategy meeting institutional control of the market at a time when the tools of investing are available to anyone with a computer. The tools already on your computer make it possible for you to become a successful rule number one investor in just 15 minutes a week. You possess a significant number of built in advantages from what you know to how fast you can move in and out of the market. The entirety of these advantages makes it possible to surpass the so called experts. If you're a good shopper who knows how to find incredible things at wonderful prices, you'll have no problem learning rule number one, which, which is based on the same concept. All it takes is a little faith, practice, and effort. If you're a new investor or if you have no financial exper experience whatsoever, you can get started to learn something risk free and guaranteed to provide financial security. If you're a seasoned investor, you can let go of old and wrong theories to escape mediocrity and learn to depend on yourself to open the door to real wealth. Rule number one is for you, regardless of your age, wealth, IQ, or social status. When used correctly, it'll ensure you never have to worry about money again. Chapter 2 The Myths of Investing Almost everybody is persuaded that a higher rate of return essentially implies more risk, and they're more scared of losing money trying to get a higher return than of their inability to retire easily. The truth is, a higher rate of return is not necessarily dependent on incurring significantly more risk. If you have no clue what you're doing, your journey will be either very slow or very dangerous. The importance of rule number one is knowing what you're doing, investing with certainty so you don't lose money. Being a mutual fund investor is more risky than being a rule number one investor. If you own mutual funds that are endeavoring to beat the market and you're trusting your fund manager to give you a nice retirement, You're almost certain to be the victim of a huge scam. Fund managers rarely beat the market, something you have paid them to do. There are three basic myths of investing. Myth one You have to be an expert to manage money. Rule number one It's quite simple, requiring at most only 15 minutes a week. Myth two You can't beat the market. Rule number one You can always take advantage of regular mispricing to reap a 15% return or more. Myth three The best way to reduce ri risk is diversifying and holding for the long term. Rule number one Buy a dollar for 50 cents and sell it later for a dollar. Repeat until very rich. If you understand rule number one, you don't have to diversify your money. You focus only on a few businesses that you understand and buy when the fund managers who control the market are fearful and you sell when they're greedy. A sales tool used by fund managers and brokers is dollar cost averaging. DCA is the strategy of purchasing stocks or mutual funds each month with the same amount of money, regardless of the stock or fund price. If the price goes down, your money will buy more shares, and your money buys fewer shares when it's up. 
The goal of dollar cost averaging is to limit your investment risk by making the average cost per share of stock smaller. For DCA to work, you need to put in the same amount every month, no matter what. Rather than trusting DCA, rule number one investors understand the value of a wonderful business and get it when it's undervalued. Chapter 3. Rule number one and the four M's of business. Rule number one has been the basis of excellent investing for the last hundred years, and it will be the basis of excellent investing a hundred years from now. Rule number one literally is don't lose money, but in practical terms, it means to invest with certainty, which comes from buying a wonderful business at an attractive price. Knowing you will make money comes from buying a wonderful business at an attractive price. Wonderful encompasses three simple elements. First, it implies that the business has meaning to you. You understand it enough to want to own it if you could, and that the business reflects your values. Secondly, wonderful means that the business meets specific criteria in terms of financial strength and predictability. It must have moat. And third, it, it must have good management. However, it's not enough for the business to be just wonderful. You need to buy this business at an attractive price. That is, that is with a very big margin of safety, MOS. A good MOS is knowing the worth of a business and buying it for half the price. It is vital to know that the price of a thing is not always equal to its value. Rule number one is about being a good shopper. Rule number one investing comes down to four steps. One, find a wonderful business. Two, know what it's worth as a business. Three, buy it at 50% off. Four, repeat until very rich. In thinking about the, pro the process of finding wonderful companies at attractive prices, it helps to think about the four M's, meaning, moat, management, and margin of safety. To understand the essence of the four M's, turn them into questions that you must answer to evaluate a business and decide whether it can be a good investment. Does the business have the four M's? If you answer yes, then the business is worth buying. Knowing how to answer these four questions regarding any company will make you a confident individual investor. Chapter 4. Does the business have meaning to you? This first question, does the business have meaning to you, implies two other questions. One, do you want to own the whole business? Two, do you understand it well enough to own all of it? What we decide to invest in gets our endorsement tacitly. Therefore, you should own what you're proud to say is yours. Investing with the consciousness of what you think is good or bad in the world will help you make the right investment decisions. This doesn't assure you of maximal success from a financial standpoint, but if you think something is bad for the world, then don't own the business behind it. Stand for whatever you want with your money and, and realize that it's a personal choice. Think of investing your money like planting seeds in the ground. Imagine that you'll reap what you sow. Also, buy every business with the 10-10 rule in mind. The 10-10 rule says, I won't own this business for 10 minutes unless I'm willing to own it for 10 years. This rule helps us remember just how long we're willing to own this business, so we're always thinking as long-term investors. It does not mean you cannot buy and sell this business repeatedly. It only makes you a much more disciplined investor. As a rule number one investor, you're going to own only a few businesses. So you have to be sure you own the, the right few businesses that won't lose your money. 
The kind of business you own should be the ones you understand so you can predict the future with some degree of certainty and then arrive at a value today. Obviously, it's much easier to understand businesses you already know a lot about than those you've never heard of. Start this process by searching for businesses you think you understand and from there, put them to a numbers test. You don't necessarily have to use the internet to conduct an initial search. An effective way for finding businesses you understand is simply to consider where you frequently shop and what you repeatedly buy. Check for where your money goes, then ask yourself what you would be proud to to own. Once you have a list of wonderful companies that appear to meet all the rule number one criteria, that list will become your watch list. It will contain the companies that require only 15 minutes a week to monitor. Then you have to know if any of these companies has a moat. Chapter 5. Does the business have a wide moat? As a rule number one investor, the first thing you want to know when you're about to buy a business is whether or not its future is predictable. You shouldn't buy a company whose future is uncertain. Looking for a business that has has a wide moat is pivotal to finding a successful business to own because a business with a wide moat is much more predictable for the next 20 years than a business with no moat. Wide moat businesses can keep up with inflation. They can raise prices as their costs go up. They have protection from inflation as well as competition. For example, Coke and Pepsi have a wide protective moat that's preventing competitors from taking their castles. Wide moat companies include eBay, Gillette, Disney, Wrigley, and Apple. Wide moat companies have some sort of monopolistic position in the market. The essence of a monopoly is the ability to raise prices at will. There are five types of moats. Companies with one or more of the five moats can survive and grow more quickly than those that have to ward off competition from some low-priced product. The five moats include 1. Brand A product you're willing to pay more for because you trust it. Examples. Coke, Gillette, Nike, Disney, McDonald's, Pepsi. 2. Secret. A business with a patent or trade secret that makes direct competition illegal or very difficult. Example. Pfizer, 3M, Intel. 3. Toll. A business with exclusive control of a market giving it the ability to collect a toll from anyone needing that service or product. For example, media companies, utilities, ad agencies. 4. Switching. A business that is so much a part of your life that switching isn't worth the trouble. Example, ADR Paychecks, H&R Block, Microsoft. 5. Price. A business that can price products so low no one can compete. Example, Walmart, Costco, Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Depot, Target. You can consider a company a potentially good investment even if it doesn't have multiple moats around it, although you're likely to find that the the wider the moat, the more likely it is is a combination of several moat categories. Coca-Cola and Microsoft, for example, Both have acquired a reputable brand identity while exhibiting other moat characteristics. Don't fuss over counting the moats around a business. Instead, focus on identifying the one moat among others that seems hardest to cross and confident that the company can sustain that moat for a very long time. Did you know? Over 10,000 bottles of Coca-Cola drinks are taken every second. Chapter 6. The Big Five Numbers of a Moat It can be tasking to know whether whether a business has a moat if you judge by instinct alone. Rule number one investors take the guesswork out of identifying a moat by looking at five numbers in particular. 
These five numbers allow you to truly see what's going on inside and whether you can keep these firms on your list of wonderful companies. If a business has at least one of the five moats, it'll show up in the big five numbers. The big five numbers include 1. Return on Investment Capital, ROIC. Return on Investment Capital, ROIC, is the rate of return a business makes on the cash it invests in itself every year. If a business has no healthy ROIC above above 10% per year on average for the last 10 years, move on to another one. 2. Sales Growth Rate Sales are the total amount of money the business took in from selling whatever widgets and digits it sells. The business will report its sales each year, allowing us to see if sales grew compared to last year. Seeing 10 years of numbers will give an idea if sales are growing consistently. If they are, the amount of growth above last year can be calculated. 3. Earnings per share, EPS, growth rate. It shows us how much the business is profiting per share of ownership. 4. Equity or book value per share, BVPS, growth rate. Equity is more or less the take-home money if a business is not sold as an ongoing business, but instead the machines, supplies, and real estate are sold off. The proceeds of the sales are added to whatever cash the business has in the bank. The debts are paid off, and the remaining cash is divvied up among its owners. Rate of equity growth tells us the business can accumulate a surplus and that, in itself, makes it exceptional. Equity growth is a good indicator of a company's strength. If a business's equity isn't growing, the business doesn't have the funds to increase its market or develop new products. 5. Free cash flow, FCF or or cash, growth rate. Cash growth, in particular, tells us whether its cash is growing with its profits or if the profits are only on paper. All of the big five should be equal to or greater than 10% per year for the last 10 years. The big five numbers are calculated on some professional sites, which mostly cost money. There are also free sites like MSN Money or Yahoo. Growth rates show how much the business is growing each year over the previous years and can give a huge clue to what rate of growth we should expect in the future. How to accurately do this calculation is to use the rate calculator, and the same calculation can be done for 10 years, 5 years, and the most recent year to see if the rate of sales growth is growing or shrinking. Guessing doesn't cut it for a Rule 1 investor. You should know with certainty that it is a wonderful business. If the business has one of the five moats and the big five plus debt look good, go on to the next step. If not, drop it off the list. Chapter 7. Does the business have great management? A wonderful business should have a leader who will drive the business to achieve a big, audacious goal. In his his book, Good to be Great, author and business researcher Jim Collins said that the CEOs who move their companies into greatness are almost all what he calls level five leaders. Collins explained that a level five leader channels his ego needs away from himself and into the larger goal of building a great company. A level five leader's essential qualities can be summarized into two, owner-oriented and driven. An owner-oriented CEO is one who has set his personal interests directly aligned with the shareholders of the business. Microsoft's Bill Gates and Stephen Ballmer see themselves as owner-oriented and run the the company accordingly. We can tell if a CEO is walking the walk to find out if he's telling us what we need to know as owners to be adequately informed about our business. 
an owner-oriented CEO will seem to be acting as if the company were the only asset their family will own for the next 100 years. The second quality of a great CEO is that he or she is driven to change the world in some small and calm way. The thing a CEO wants to make happen is called his bag, big audacious goal. The bag also tells everyone in the organization the most important thing to focus on every day. It becomes the company's vision, and if it is a good one, it can drive the business for years. To know if a CEO is driven, you can go online and Google the CEO's name. Businessweek, Forbes, Fortune, and the Wall Street Journal have charged reporters with the responsibility of digging up stories on CEOs. You already have all the information you will ever need to decide if the CEO is the kind of person you want to invest with. Once you've read the articles, read their annual letters to shareholders on company websites. They usually put their bag in their letters, too. After you read the articles and letters, you have to decide whether it's all talk or whether they're walking the walk. If you know that a a company had a bad year, evidenced in its numbers and how much stakeholders lost, Check out what the CEO had to say about it in his annual letter to shareholders. If he doesn't admit to mistakes and not only highlights the challenges ahead, but explains what he intends to do about them, you're staring at a questionable jockey who doesn't know how to ride the horse. Don't get on that horse with him. Chapter 8. Demand a Margin of Safety The practical application of rule number one investing is buying a dollar of value for 50 cents. We first determine the correct sticker price on a given business. Then we determine the margin of safety, MOS. This is what defines attractive price. MOS is half of the sticker price. It is vital to get an MOS on every business you buy, no matter the kind of business. MOS will not only make you money, it will keep you from losing it in a bubble. Knowing the sticker and MOS price keeps you from buying too expensive of businesses. Sticker price refers to the price of a business that's fair, neither overpriced or underpriced. Sticker price has several other names in the financial community, including intrinsic value, fair value, and retail price. The sticker price of a business is more than the value of its parts. The major part of a business's value is the money it's going to make in the future for its owners. Arriving at the right sticker price entails knowing four numbers that will be used to make some calculations. One. Current EPS, earnings per share. 2. Estimated future EPS growth rate. 3. Estimated future PE, price earnings. 4. Minimum acceptable rate of return from this investment. The amount of money a business makes is called earnings or profits, and the most accurate way earnings are reported to owners is called earnings per share, or EPS. So so what we really want to know to get started is what the EPS is going to be in the future. The sticker price of any business is based on its future EPS and future PE. To get the sticker price, one, Grow the current EPS at the estimated EPS growth rate for 10 years to obtain the future EPS. 2. Multiply the future EPS by the future PE. PE equals price over EPS to obtain the future market price. 3. Shrink the future market price by the minimum acceptable rate of return per year to obtain the sticker price. Remember that the margin of safety is half of whatever the sticker price is. Chapter 9. Know the right time to sell. 
The conceptual exercise of thinking you're never going to sell is an important one for the rule number one investor. It prevents you from falling into the trap of being an ordinary speculator in the market. The right time to sell a company is never. Warren Buffett. So, the perfect business to buy is one we never have to sell. It continues to make us rich. The richest people in the world are business owners because businesses grow their money much faster than anything else. Being able to reinvest annual gains and compound money continually at 15% or more a year in a wonderful company is important to a Rule 1 investor. However, there are two times to sell. One, when the business has stopped being wonderful. Two, when the market price is more than the sticker price. A business is wonderful in Rule 1 terms because we want to own it, we understand it, it has a consistent, predictability, durable moat, and Level 5 management. Once you sell a company that's not so wonderful anymore, don't obsess over it as it sits on your watch list, hoping you can buy it back as soon as possible. Make an an active effort to find other wonderful companies that pass the 4M test. Do your homework. Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not, to put this plan into action. Napoleon Hill If you buy a business and the price starts going down after you bought it with no sign of relenting, you can deal with this by telling yourself that even though the stock has gone down in price, you really haven't lost any money as long as you don't sell it. In other words, just pretend you're not losing money and therefore not violating rule number one. Also, you can make up the difference by making more money in some other short-term investment that you lost in the rule number one business. Some computer programs watch every trade in the business you are interested in. These tools tell everybody when the big guys are buying in or selling out of any business. They are instrumental once you've identified a wonderful business that passes all four M's and you want to buy. They're readily available for free at sites like MSN Money, Yahoo Finance, or on your broker's website. They are MACD, Stochastics, and Moving Averages. Conclusion Remember, your goal is to buy $1 for 50 cents. You may have found at least one business that has meaning to you, that you would be proud to own and that you understand. Do your homework until you find if those businesses meet the first three of the four M's, meaning, moat, and management. Remember, the only kind of business that has a predictable future is a wonderful company. Do your best to avoid listening to any emotional voices within you that can steer you in the wrong direction. Don't get lazy. Most importantly, don't lose sight of being a true rule number one investor. Get in the game so you can make money work for you. Take it one baby step at a time. There's no rush. There'll always be wonderful companies available at attractive active prices. Your job is to take your time and never violate rule number one. Don't allow the fear of loss to compel you to keep giving money to a financial service industry. You don't need a fund manager. You can invest successfully on your own. Try this. Create your watch list. List the few wonderful businesses you want to buy depending on how much you already know about them. Check if they meet the criteria for fantastic investments. Focus on only rule number one businesses and don't diversify the market. Eliminate the barriers in your way and don't allow fear to hold you back. 